Turn and face the cross as we join together in our call to worship. We welcome you to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning God has given us. And if you are visiting with us, we invite you to fill out the little yellow card in the pews to let us know who you are. And today our theme, we're going to be looking at how Jesus takes a hold of our lives and uh, how our lives just change as a result of that. So we will now join together in singing hymn number 660, Lift High the Cross.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your Spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us be seated for the lessons we find on page four of our bulletins. Meanwhile, Jim's coming up for the lessons. Uh, let me do lift up that we uh, honored uh, Lois Berry and Cindy Owens at our 8 o'clock service, uh, who are both retiring uh, as our fellowship chairs. They did a wonderful job. It's, uh, all the committee chair positions are, are, are jobs with a lot of responsibility for a, um, much ministry in our congregation. And so uh, they worked hard for uh, the over four years that they did that job. And if you see them, uh, tell them thanks and that we appreciate their hard work. And, and we uh, need a new fellowship chair. So if you uh, want to know more about what that would look like, please talk to me or Pastor Liz. Thanks. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my loved one my holy song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judea judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield grapes, wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant plantings. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry, the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Even though I, too, have reason for confidence in the flesh, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness, 
under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have everything of loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through the faith in Christ, the righteousness of God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may obtain resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this is one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. I invite you to stand as we prepare for our gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. I'm looking at this uh, text from Philippians today. We're going to be looking at Philippians uh, through the month of October. And in verse 12, the translation we have says that we are made uh, of his. We become Christ's. But the, the one that I like is Christ grabbed hold of me for just this purpose. Christ grabbed hold of me. This translation comes from the Common English Bible. What does it mean to be grabbed hold of by Christ? For Paul, it meant going on the road to Damascus and suddenly being struck blind and hearing a voice saying, Saul, Saul, which is his name at the time, Saul, why do you persecute me? And in that moment, having his whole life changed, his perspective 
changed? What does it mean to be grabbed hold of by Christ? For Martin Luther, it looked like spending the first years of his life in the monastery you know, what you would think is like the epitome of, you know, having it made religiously. He spent years feeling the weight and burden of not being able to make it all right. His sin, trying harder and harder to make it all all right, make himself right. He said of that time, I lost touch with Christ the Savior and Comforter and made of him the jailer and hangman of my soul. And it was scripture where he was grabbed hold of by Christ, opened up to a new way of seeing, seeing himself, his life, God's work in his life, His whole perspective, his whole life changed. What does it mean to be grabbed by Jesus? It means our life changes. Our perspective changes. This is what Paul is talking about. He has every reason to be confident in the world. Before Christ grabbed hold of him, he was the big shot. This is his long list at the first part of our text. He's got all the righteousness. He is blameless before the law. He is devoted to living it out. He is educated, had all the right degree and, and all the status markers that he could capture. And Jesus grabs hold of him. And he loses all of it. Now he sits in prison writing this letter. And more than that, he writes that all those things that he once thought of as defining who he is and what the world thought made him valuable, he counts it all as rubbish. They are a loss in comparison to knowing Christ, where his true righteousness comes. All of it, a loss. Jesus grabs hold of Paul and so now writes that he pursues just one thing. He forgets about the things behind him and reaches out for the things ahead of him. What happens when we are grabbed hold of by Jesus? We forget about the things behind us and reach for the things ahead of us. Our goals change. Our perspective changes. If we have defined our lives by status, by success, by the perfect values we got, even by being the best church person, Christ grabs hold of us and changes our perspective, changes our goals. These things that have been our identity, that have defined us, they no longer do. They may seem really good to the rest of the world, and they may even seem really good to us, but because of Christ, they become trash to us. It's another translation, rubbish, trash, sewage, excrement. You can keep coming up with words. They are nothing. Some of us, though, we may look at Paul's past and we can't see ourselves. 
And we think that in order to get it all right with the kind of past we got, we actually do got to look like Paul. Or we really, what we're thinking is we got to look like Saul. The one who does everything right, who is blameless, is successful, who gains the world and all its status. And Jesus grabs hold of us and changes our perspective, changes our goal. Like Martin Luther, we discover that what Jesus gives is a gift. And like Paul, we realize that it's not our righteousness, but Christ's righteousness. Jesus grabs hold of us and we turn from paths of hurt and anger, from self-doubt and self-hate, no longer defined by it, no longer grabbed by it, but grabbed by Christ. We are not defined by pasts filled with violence or addiction or brokenness of any kind. Forget the things behind me and reach out for the things ahead of me. Now let's be real. Some of the stuff that lies behind us is from 30 minutes ago. Amen? Maybe even 30 seconds ago. Some of the stuff that has grabbed hold of us, grabbed hold of us just yesterday. We get so easily distracted, so easily pulled away. I picture us like the dog in the movie Up. Anybody seen this movie? Maybe if you have kids or grandkids. This movie is an animated movie where there's a dog named Doug. Elaine tell, told me this. His name is Doug. And he looks at his owner with all the love and joy and worship that you know you've seen dogs give. And he is beside himself with excitement and just zoned in completely on his owner. He loves his person. He loves him so much. And while he's zoned in, he suddenly goes, squirrel! Literally. Zoned in on his person so excited and worshiping and loving, and he suddenly goes, squirrel? That's us. Amen? We get so distracted. We get pulled by our hurts or our insecurities, our fears, our past. We get pulled away. Or we might start talking a little differently from Paul. Rather than saying that we haven't reached the goal, we might start talking like we have reached the goal. Or at least we're further along than somebody else, so-and-so over there, or everybody else. And why can't all these other people get it together? We start talking in terms of arrogance or self-righteousness. We get pulled away by prejudice. And pretty soon we are completely distracted, headed off on another path. Jesus grabs hold of us again, telling us, look ahead. Why are you chasing after squirrels? And what lies ahead of us? Our new goal, our prize, God's upward call in Christ Jesus. One writer named it this way. We become more ourselves as we become his. Knowing Christ leads us to know who we are who we really are, 
who God created us to be. Not defined by our hurts or our struggles, not defined by the successes that the world celebrates us for, not even the values that we're tempted to celebrate ourselves for. God calls us to the identity we have in Christ. Even today, God is doing something in your life right now. Jesus is grabbing hold of you today, right now, wherever you are. Christ is tugging at your perspectives, changing how you view the world or yourself or others. He's wrenching out of your grasp the things you have been defining yourself by that have got you distracted. This is the upward call of God. Again and again, being held by Jesus and shedding what has taken hold of us, what we've been holding on to. Look ahead. Look ahead to that call. Because Jesus has grabbed hold of you. And Jesus will keep on holding you. He is holding you right now. Forget the things behind. Reach out for the things ahead. God's call for your life, for who you are, in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand as we join in singing hymn 667. and 
Let us pray. God, we thank you for grabbing hold of us, taking us from paths that were not meant for us, and pointing us straight to know who we are and whose we are. Help us to lay down the things that we are carrying, the crosses that are not meant for us, and to take up the cross you have given us, that you have called us to. Help us to lay down our hurt, our anger, our self-righteousness, and hold us, Lord, in your mercy. God, may the call you give us take root and grow And may it change how we view ourselves and all those around us. May it change how we see our world. May it have us living alongside each other and crying with one another. And so we cry out to you today for the families who are grieving at the loss of their loved ones in Las Vegas, for those who are injured, for healing for the traumatized, for the first responders. Lord, may we gather as one to pray and care and act for one another. We pray too for Puerto Rico, for those who are grieving and struggling and fainting and weary. Lord, renew, rebuild, restore. And we pray this for every corner of our world, known and unknown to us, that is crying out this morning. Lord, in your mercy. And God, we pray for all those in our community who are struggling with addiction or depression or grief, For those on journeys of illness, we pray for Kimberly Beery, Meg Reidler, Harlan Soppy, Christine Ickes, David Schaefer, Linda Olson, Pat Ramsey, Harold Kaler, Susan Franklin, Lauren Blake, Holly Hessler, Daryl Sickles, Mary Hodge, Cindy Baptiste, Sue McClid, Bev Healy, Debbie Drum, Ron Resch, Jessica and Dan Riffle, Roberta Hammond, Mary Lou Fritz, Kairos with Rich and Mac, Becky Bloom, Paul Newell, Lance Kirkland, Rain Harris, and others we name in this moment. God, looking ahead, looking towards you, we entrust all these things to you knowing that you care for us and will hold us through it all. In your name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share God's peace with one another.
gifts that we have from the women of song uh, and the gifts that you brought for God's kingdom today. She said.
with all these good gifts this morning. Thanks, Jessica. Let us pray. God of life, you give us these gifts of the earth, these resources of our life and our labor. Take them offered in great thanksgiving and use them to set a table that will heal the whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and light. Amen. Amen. With joyful hearts, let us join with all the saints and sing this unending hymn. creation, we celebrate your presence that has moved towards us in Jesus. Help us be turned around, Lord, and follow that presence throughout our life, that presence that we can find now in this meal of bread and wine that Jesus promised to be near with. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he gave thanks, saying, take and eat. This is my body and it's been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this wine, we proclaim the very mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Come, Spirit, come and enliven our lives with this meal of bread and wine. Come, Spirit, come. Meet us in this place and send us forth. Come, Spirit, come. Make us your body. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table that God has set. Amen. You may be seated. We'll commune our assistants first and bring this meal forward for everyone to eat. If you're visiting today, please know that you're invited to eat with us. God will meet you here. Body of Christ given for you.
Let us pray. Holy and compassionate God, in bread and wine you give us gifts that form us to be humble and courageous. May your words come to life in our serving and in our witness, that we might speak a living voice of healing and justice to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Uh, just a few announcements as we uh, scatter uh, to be God's people this week. Uh, we are in uh, this month of October. We are going to be talking uh, much about Reformation themes. We are celebrating as a worldwide church 500 years of Reformation. Uh, not a time to celebrate that we have broken away uh, from the church, but uh, a prayer that the church is always reforming. And uh, the 500 years marks the, the point when uh, Martin Luther, uh, in, in the midst of conflict in Germany, over indulgences, uh, which were papers that you could buy for forgiveness in the time of Luther, uh, nailed a, a 95 reasons why that wasn't a great idea onto the doors of uh, the Wittenberg Chapel and to call a debate on that. And so those, that nailing of those 95 theses was 500 years ago, and we remember that in the church now. So you heard uh, something about the following the cross today. Uh, we're going to lift up other the themes that were important to, to Luther's uh, reforms uh, around Scripture and around law and gospel. We're going to get together with our friends across the street, our good friends uh, at St. Pius Roman Catholic Church on Wednesday uh, at the end of the month uh, for a dialogue and for a meal together and, and for a worship service. And we're going to have a big blowout uh, worship service on the last Sunday of the month on Reformation Sunday. So... All this uh, to mark that, so I, I, I lay that before you. Today, as you are leaving, uh, if you'd still like to go to uh, uh, the party that's going on tonight at the Arnold House, the getting to know you party, uh, the Arnolds and the Campbells have done this on their own to, to try to bring these three congregations together, that's Messiah, I encourage you to do it. They are, it's a nice evening, uh, two hours long, uh, small talk, uh, made, bring an app dish to, to pass, or an appetizer, I think, is, is all they ask, and, uh, and, and enjoy, enjoy yourself. So sign up for that before you leave, just to make sure they have enough of everything that they need. And I think that's about all, other than what is in our bulletin boards uh, for you to look at. If you want to be part of a music group, we have a lot of them. We have the men that meet on Tuesday, the if you want to be part of them, the, the bells that meet on Monday, the senior saints that meet on a Wednesday, the chancel choir uh, that you saw K, uh, which a part of that is the women of song, and they meet on Thursdays. There are all sorts of ways you can use your musical talents here at Messiah. So talk to me if, if, if one of those can make sense for you. Uh, the last thing is, is that uh, Pastor Liz goes on vacation now, so she is already lost us now. She's thinking about other things. So keep her in your prayers as she travels uh, uh, this week ahead. And keep me in your prayers as I'm asked to work for a week. So there you go. Why don't we uh, stand? We'll have our blessing before we scatter. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen. Let us leave with this last hymn.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Amen.